In this video, we're going to cover an overview of the fruit number. We're not going to go into details on how to use it and how to calculate it, but we will see how we can use it to classify flows. Now, open channel flows are heavily influenced by gravitational forces. We can measure the effects of these gravitational forces by comparing them to the effect of the inertial forces. This comparison results in a variable called the fruit number. The fruit number can be defined as the ratio of inertial forces to gravitational forces. In this equation, the inertial forces are represented by the velocity term in the numerator, and the gravitational forces are represented by the square root of gravitational acceleration times length in the denominator. The velocity usually represents the average velocity along a cross-section, and the characteristic length can vary depending on the cross-section. But we will go into details on how to calculate that characteristic length in the future. But for now, so that you have an idea, just think about it this way. For a rectangular channel, so a channel with a rectangular cross-section, the characteristic length will typically be the depth of that channel. As you can see, the fruit number is a dimensionless parameter because the units of the numerator will cancel out with the units of the denominator. We can use the fruit number to classify a flow into three different categories. First, if the velocity is higher than the gravitational force term and our fruit number is greater than one, we can classify the flow as supercritical or rapid. This means that the inertial forces have more influence on the flow than the gravitational forces. Supercritical flows are usually characterized by having shallow depths and relatively high velocities. On the contrary, if the gravitational force is greater than the inertial force and our fruit number is smaller than one, we can call this flow subcritical flow or tranquil flow. Tranquil flows are characterized by having greater depths and slower velocities than supercritical flows. There's a third category. When the fruit number equals 1, that is, when both the inertial and gravitational forces seem to have the same effect on a flow, we call it critical flow. Now, in future lessons, we are going to go into details on how we can calculate fluid properties for supercritical, subcritical, and for critical flow. But for now, I wanted you to have an idea of what the fruit number was and what these terms meant and how we can use them to classify flows.